Hi, today I wanted to talk to you about creating your own path, but taking care of others along the way. My name is Chell Hines and I'm the founder of Helping Hands. I'm also an equity, diversity, and inclusion consultant as well as a career coach. Um, so I just wanted to take this time to kind of tell you a little bit about my story, my journey through high school and university, kind of what led me here today and how I'm really where I am because I took the time to care about others and to be kind. So kind of my first story I want to share is when I was in high school, I was sitting um, in the cafeteria one day and I could hear some people over talk about how homeless people are lazy and they need to stop asking for handouts. And I was livid, like so angry. If you can imagine like a cartoon anime character where like they're turning red in the ears, like that's what I felt. And I realized I could have walked over there and I was like so tempted to walk over and start screaming and be like, how could he be so inconsiderate? And I took a second to back and be like, maybe they really just don't know. Um, so what I ended up uh, doing is I asked my uh, principal and um, one of the teachers around the school saying, can I be out, uh, I went to school with uniform and I said, can I be out of uniform? And instead of being in uniform, what I did is I dressed up in kind of some more raggedy clothes and every day I had two stories taped to me. So one, I printed out stories taped to my front and to my back and had stories of why um, teenagers were homeless. And it talked a lot about LGBTQ issues like parents um, coming out and parents not accepting that, um, religious issues and a lot of mental health. And people would stop me every single day and read these stories. I can say I was constantly late to class, so maybe not the best idea. But it started to have a conversation. People started like talking and seeing what they think they can do. Um, this kind of led to me being the chair of my school's social action committee. And I wanted to kind of say that I think a lot of the important part of trying to create social action, trying to create difference, trying to create kindness is actually talking about the issues um, that exist. Um, you know, and a lot of, you know, uh, boomers get mad at millennials. So I'm in the millennial generation. I know a lot of you guys are Gen Zers and they kind of complain to us being like, oh, you guys are just show, like couch activists. You guys just talk about these issues. Um, but it is important to talk about them. It is important to take a step. Um, but it's really important that we understand some of these issues. So even right now with COVID-19, you know, when back in February before everything was on lockdown, I remember calling a friend being like, you know what, I'm really worried about the effects of domestic and child abuse. Um, that if people were, to, if we are to get like Wuhan and have a lockdown, what does that mean when people can't leave their house and they can't, and they're, you know, in a house with somebody who is being abusive to them? And a lot of people are having conversations and now these conversations are actually leading to action and support networks for people who are possibly facing domestic abuse or child abuse. So it's really important that we have these conversations. The second story I want to share um, is uh, I recognize that we kind of didn't learn a lot of financial literacy, that we didn't really know how to save money um, if you know we're lucky to have a job or if you know we got that birthday money. Um, so I actually used a stock market competition that gave you fake 100 Gs and you could buy fake stocks with it, um, but it was the real prices. And I used that as a tool to actually teach some of my fellow peers um, about you know, how to save, how to do GICs, how to do the stock market. And the reason why I kind of bring this and then the last story is that a lot of times there's really creative ways that you can build your own skills, but also take care and teach other people. So the last story is I was sitting in class one day, grade 11 chemistry, I will never forget this, and a girl starts crying, just break down like tears. Um, and so I went to all go school that was non-semester, so we all you know all eight courses at the same time. And it is a stressful situation to be under when you have to worry about, you know, eight courses at the same time. And so I, I recognize a lot of people, you know, in our school, I think had um, anxiety, anxiety and depression issues, but I had no clue how to actually, you know, address these issues. It wasn't something talked about in the media at the time, like TV didn't really talk about mental health. Um, so I actually applied to the government. I got $800. I went to my principal and I was like, could we have the day off of school? And she's like, 
what? What do you mean you want the day off of school? And I was like, yes, I want the day off of school. And instead, um, we're going to have all the students get together and we're going to talk about um, how to be healthy, both in, um, you know, physically and mentally and spiritually. Um, and this was an amazing, amazing day. It was run all by students. Teachers were only there taking attendance. And this was one of the first times this was done at the school board. And I bring these three stories up because every time I saw an issue, I saw an issue with people talking about um, issues with people being homeless. I saw issues around financial literacy and what that means later on in life. And I saw issues around mental health. And I could have just sat there and done nothing about it, but I actually decided to do something. I you know, and used creative ways to do it. You know, all of these th three stories were very different in how I achieved my goal. And the reason why I bring this up is that we think that maybe showing kindness looks one way, but being kind can actually look multiple different ways and something that means to you. So if for you, you're artistic, you can, you, you could, you know, draw a painting that starts conversations that people can have. If you're good at organizing people around, then you know you can create a conference you can do something like this you can do something like ymci ymci talks um and a lot of these skill sets were very useful later on when i was trying to get a job i can say that i organized a conference that is impressive so you can look at how being kind actually helps you out um, so i actually went to university for biomedical and electrical engineering so i wear an engineering uh, ring i got involved in a lot of different clubs and this is something i highly recommend to you guys if you do decide to go to post-secondary um is to get involved with clubs that have to do with your with you know the subject that you're in um so i was a part of the women in science and engineering club but also do things that you know relate to you and make you ha are fun so i was a part of the mcmaster association for Association of West Indian students because um, my mother is from Trinidad um, and I was also um, stuff that put you into leadership positions so I was the Mc, uh, for the McMaster chapter of the National Society of Black Engineers I was the program coordinator and I actually got to coordinate a tutoring program um, for some low-income students in Hamilton it was amazing because you know as an engineer we had to be good at math and we got to go use that skill set and actually go and teach um, you know people that didn't have access to tutors and we're struggling with math. Uh, this is a picture of me in engineering, and for me, this is so important. And the reason why I brought up creating your own path is that right now a lot of people are like, oh, you're an engineer, but you're doing all these things. Like, isn't that what that engineer doesn't do that? But I'm like, no. Paths and whatever you decide to do is what you decide to make of it. If you want to be a lawyer, you could also be artistic. If you want to be an engineer, you could also do music. That, you know, you're not just one thing. And that's something that sometimes I think a lot of people misconstrue. And they think if I'm, you know, deciding to go off in university and do this one thing or go to college, I only have to do this thing. But no, you can do so much more. But the other thing is there's you can, ways you can actually use what you learn and give back to your community. So while I was in school, I actually started learning how to do software development. So I actually created some of the very first Android apps um, that existed. And one thing that really bothered me when I was in high school is I realized a lot of people were struggling to figure out where to do their volunteer hours. Um, and that kind of led to me um, starting to do these things called hackathons. I started doing these competitions um, where I would learn how to code and I would do it on my own time. It was really fun outside of school. but that whole problem of volunteering bothered me. And I decided, you know, one day, why not make an app to help students actually figure out where to do their volunteer hours? Um, so Help and Hands app was born. It helps you figure out where to do volunteer, so you, your volunteer matching, um, so you can figure out what organizations you want to volunteer for. Um, instead of using those pieces of paper, which I could figure out a lot of people forget and a lot of people lose. Um, you can actually track your experiences as well as get feedback from volunteer coordinators because especially when you're ready to get scholarships or you have to do essays, sometimes you want letters of reference and it was really intimidating for me to go and ask for help. So this was a great way that right in the app you can get feedback. Um, but kind of along that process, I realized that even if we had the app, a lot of people didn't really know why volunteering was so useful to them. So I actually went to the government and got a grant to start this nonprofit where we go into schools, we do workshops. Uh, so traditionally, I would maybe come into, uh, you know, York Mills or other schools um, within uh, the school board and talk about why volunteering is important. We host volunteer fairs, so we'll bring organizations into schools or into community centers. Um, set up boots so you can walk around. We have mentors. 
Um, we have also do a lot of work with different levels of government, so local government, the provincial and the federal government to make sure young people are being heard. We share stories constantly of young people who are doing amazing work. And if you're ready to start your own club, so you're inspired after listening to all these amazing talks and like, hey, I wanna make a change, I wanna do something, we actually have a program that will help teach you and provide support for you to do that. Um, I just wanted to quickly go over, just always think about the different types of issues that exist out there and the causes that you can get involved in, as well as I really want you to think about skills. So this is something that if you're interested in knowing more, Helping Hands, we do these workshops. We'll actually be doing a lot online right now. So I'll um, put some information at the end of this that you could contact and kind of figure out how you can find out more about how you can build your skills. So if you're like, hey, I'm kind of bad at procrastinating all the time and I want to improve my time management skills you can do that through volunteering as well um, as make sure that you have a really really strong resume um, a lot of people that we've helped have gotten jobs while still in high school or straight out of high school got amazing jobs based on their volunteering and how we were able to help them redo their resume so that's something that again I'll put my email at the end and you can message and find out more about that um, our app is still in development. We decided to redo it recently and everything in the app is tied to making sure that if you want to volunteer somewhere, you're actually building a skill that's very useful for you. So if you want to improve your communication skills, the app can help you do that. Um, you know, I kind of talked a little earlier about like you and my own path and kind of creating kindness along the way. Um, I never imagined I would be where I am today. I thought I would just, you know, when I graduated from high school, I was like, I'm going to be an engineer. I'm going to go work for some company. Um, but now I run, I work for myself. I run this nonprofit. And I've gotten to do amazing things because of that. So earlier this year, and that's how I got to meet Abigail, who thank you so much for, you know, inviting me uh, to speak today um, to actually go see Obama. So I found out Obama was coming to town. I messaged them and I got 45 uh, tickets for young people to go see Obama for free and the tickets were $450 and it's just talking about being kind I really wanted to be like hey I know I would love to see Obama I'm pretty sure a lot of other people would love to see Obama that would have no clue how to do it let's see if I can spend some time trying to convince them to give me free tickets I've had the amazing opportunity to meet both the Prime Minister of Canada Justin Trudeau as well as the Prime Minister of Netherlands Mark Root to talk about um, young people and what the voices we have, as well as equity, diversity, and inclusion issues around women um, being involved in the tech industry. I've had amazing chances to be on stage with government officials talking about women entrepreneurship, as well as being invited by companies to talk about, again, young people and the skills um, that we can bring to the work workforce. Um, had the opportunity to be featured in uh, news uh, newspapers um, on many different stages, as well as uh, live TV, which was very nerve wracking, um, but talking about um, how you know, women, young women face a lot of barriers and what could everyone come together to do to try to fix some of these issues. I've had the chance um, to meet amazing people, including Jamal McGlore, uh, the uh, Raptors coach for an award uh, for some of my work, as well as being featured as Forbes top 30 under 30. And, you know, I bring up these to say, not to brag, but to say, if you just follow your own path, you follow what you believe in, you try to do things and use your skills to better the world, things will come back to you. People will recognize your efforts. You know, good things will come to you. So I really want to encourage you guys to think, you know, what do I want to do and how can I use, you know, the skills I have, the talents you have to give back to the world? Um, and if you need any help, you know, again, you can message me. So you can email me at info at helpinghandsapp.com um, and we can provide all the support you need. You can also follow us on social media. We're constantly posting, for example, those Obama tickets, we posted them on Instagram. So follow us. We're constantly posting things almost every single day. And I Thank you so much again to York Mills Collegiate for inviting me uh, to speak today. It's amazing. I wish everyone a great time and kind of spend the next uh, little while thinking, you know, how could you be kind? How could you create your own path? And how can you lend a helping hand? Thank you.